This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this flat style pretzel graphic using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started here in Inkscape. By the way if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom. <coughs> And we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we're going to open up the uh, Align and Distribute menu with that button there. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw a square. So we'll grab the uh, Squares and Rectangles tool and hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfect, a perfect square like that. We'll go back to the Select tool. Uh, I'm going to turn that uh, red and bring the opacity of that down about in half. And then I'll come up here to where it says width and height. I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the lock icon and I'm going to make sure that the width is 250. So I'm just going to erase whatever number that is in there. For me it's already 250. I got lucky there. But whatever it is for you, just hit 250 and hit enter. I want that to be 250 pixels by 250 pixels. And then we'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then we'll go to the circles and ellipses tool and create a circle. We'll hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we'll make that blue. And we'll go back to the select tool. And again, we want to make this 250 as well. So we'll erase whatever number that is in there. Hit 250 and hit enter. Uh, we'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then hold shift and click on the square and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And we can click off of it to deselect everything. So what, we can do, what we're going to do now is take the, uh, the blue circle, right click that and go to duplicate, then hold shift and click on the red square, and with them both selected go to path, difference, and then path, break apart. And what you want to do now is uh, hold shift on the keyboard and click on the bottom right corner square right there to deselect it and then press delete on the keyboard so we just have these just this one left right here and I'll click and drag over uh, these two objects and then I'll go to path union and then path break apart and when you do that there should be these little fragments here that are selected uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of them. We're going to hold shift and click on the large red shape to deselect that. And we're just left with these fragments here selected. And with them selected, we'll just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this red object now. Click on it again to get the rotation handles. And hold control on the keyboard and take this top left corner, this rotation corner, and rotate it around one, two, three, four. Four steps like that. And what we're going to do now is... I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on the color blue to give it a blue outline. And then I'll click on the X to get rid of the red fill. And once we've done that, I'll come over to the Stroke Style tab and I'm going to change the width of this to 60. And I'm going to give this a rounded join and a rounded cap. And what we'll do next is I'm going to right click that and go to Duplicate. And I'll flip that horizontally with this button up here. Flip Selected Objects Horizontally and then hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this out to about there. So we're starting to get the shape of the pretzel. This is going to be like the outside shape, like this part right here. And what we're going to do now is, uh, let's click off of that to deselect everything. Let's turn on the snap, snap to cusp nodes tool and we'll grab the bezier pen which is right here or you can just press B on the keyboard to get that. And snap the cursor onto this corner and then click, snap it onto that corner click and hit enter you've created to create a line like that so what we'll do now is I'm gonna change the width of that line to 60 and I'm gonna give that a rounded cap and a rounded join and I'll make this blue by holding shift and clicking on the color blue and I'll bring the opacity of that down a little bit as well and then we'll go to the uh, edit paths by nodes tool and just click on that blue line and just click and drag it down like that and then click on this node right here and hold control and grab this handle and make sure it's going at the same angle that this line is going at. We want it to be running parallel. 
So, oops, somewhat like that. And we want to do the same thing over here to this side. Click on that, hold control, grab that handle, pull that down so it's running parallel. And we want these two handles to be somewhat uh, on the same horizontal plane. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a couple of times to zoom in. And I'm going to come up here to where these increments and this, this, these measurements are. And I'm just going to click and drag and pull down a horizontal guide. I'm just going to put that guide right about, right about there. And we want to make sure the round part of those handles are both on that guide. So let me just make sure that's pretty good. And I'll come over here and I'll adjust that one just to make sure that this object is somewhat symmetrical. And that's pretty good. Let me go back to the select tool, click off of that to deselect everything and hover the cursor over that blue line until it turns red and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Now press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create these little tail pieces that come off the sides of the pretzel. So uh, to do that, I'll go back to the Bezier pen, which is right here, or you just press B on the keyboard. Oops, press B on the keyboard. Snap to this corner, click, and then hold control and move this line out. About that, maybe about that far, that's pretty good. And you just click again, and then let go of control and hit enter. And we've got a little line right there. We're gonna change the width of this in the stroke style tab. We'll change that to 60. Give that a rounded join and a rounded cap. Make that blue by holding shift and clicking on the color blue. Bring the opacity of that down a little bit. We'll go back to the select tool. I'm gonna to right click that and go to duplicate and I'll flip that horizontally and just put this over here onto that corner. All right, so the next step is we're gonna make these two little tail pieces extend a little further. So to do that, I'm gonna click and drag over the entire graphic and click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate this counterclockwise uh, one, two, three, four, four steps until this line is going vertically like that. And then click off of that to deselect everything. Then take just that piece right there and go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and hold Control and take this node and just click and drag this up to about that other blue line right there. That's pretty good. And we'll go back to the Select tool, click and drag over the whole graphic, click on it again to get the rotation handles, and then we're gonna hold Control and rotate it clockwise one, two, two steps like that. Click off of it to deselect, and we'll go to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click on this little object right here. Then hold control and take this node and just click and drag it to the left about that far, and that's pretty good. We'll go back to the Select tool, click and drag over the entire graphic, click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate it clockwise. One, two, two steps, and it should be sitting upright again like that. So I'm gonna click on it again to get the scaling handles. And I'm gonna come up here to where it says effect. Make sure you have this box turned off. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. For what we're gonna do next, we wanna make sure that's turned off. So once that's turned off, I'm gonna hold control and shift and scale this down a little bit, just to make this a little thicker. Maybe a little more. I'm paying attention to this white space between in the middle there. We don't want that to be closed. We still wanna have some white space in there. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, no, let me scale that back up a little bit. About that far. That's a pretty good thickness right there. And once we've done that, we can go to path, stroke to path, and then bring the opacity of it all the way up. And then click off it to deselect everything. So what we're going to do now is create the little, uh, like the shadow parts that tell you that the, um, that so so certain pieces are overlaying other pieces. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this blue shape right here. I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll turn that red. And I'll bring the opacity of that down about in half. And I'm gonna go to path, outset. But we need to do that a few more times. So instead of clicking on that menu a bunch of times, I'm just gonna use the keyboard shortcut, which is control zero. So I'll hit control zero, one, two, three, actually no, two. Two times like that, that's pretty good. Just make sure it doesn't get bigger than the white space right there. Let me let me show you, if I go bigger like that, it's now encasing that white space between the red and the blue is gone. We don't want that. So once it's that thick, that's pretty good. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on this by pressing plus on the keyboard a few times. Grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can just press B on the keyboard, and start the line going through that white space right there. And hold control and click and drag this line straight through. Let go of control and just bring this around through the outside, back up through here. Create a custom shape like that. I'll go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on the blue object, I mean the red object, and go to path intersection. And what we could do now is click on this blue object over here to the left, right click that, and go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the red object, and go to path intersection. And then lower that one step so it goes beneath that blue object and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And click off of that to deselect. So we have that part done. We have to do this part over here now. We're going to make it look like we have it looking like this object is overlaying this one. Now we're going to make this one overlay this one over here. So to do that, let's click on this blue object. Right click that, go to duplicate, turn that red, bring the opacity down in half. And we're going to outset it a couple of times by holding control and pressing zero. One, two, two times. That's pretty good. Let me zoom back in by pressing plus on the keyboard. Grab the Bezier pen over here. Or just press B on the keyboard. Start the line going through this white space. Hold control. Click and drag it all the way through. And we can let go of control and finish this up going around the outside of the blue shape like that. I'm going to go back to the select tool. Hold shift, click on the red shape, and go to path, intersection, and then click on this blue shape, right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on this red shape, and go to path, intersection, and then finally we're going to click on this blue shape, right click that, and go to duplicate, then hold shift and click on the red shape, and go to path, difference and then bring the opacity all the way up and we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100 percent click off of that to deselect so finally we have to put the uh the shading over these two pieces right here so to do that we'll click on the blue object right click that go to duplicate turn that red bring the opacity of that down in half we're going to outset that a couple of times by holding control and pressing zero so we'll control zero one two that's pretty good let me zoom in a little bit. Again, pressing plus and minus to zoom in and out. And what I'm going to do now with this red shape is I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll flip that horizontally and hold shift and click on this blue shape over here and center it on the vertical axis. And then click off it to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this blue shape over here and then hold shift and click on this blue shape down here. And with them both selected, right click that and go to duplicate and go to path, union, and then hold shift and click on the red shape and go to path, intersection. And then finally, we want to click on this blue shape beneath it, right click that and go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the red object and go to path, difference, and bring the opacity all the way up and then go to path, break apart, and click off of it to deselect everything. Then we could take this red object right here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And that was a little bit tricky, but we're going to do this one more time over here. So uh, we're going to click on this blue shape over here to the right, and then hold shift, click this blue shape at the bottom, right click them, go to duplicate, and go to path, union, then hold shift and click on the red shape and go to path intersection and then click on the blue shape right click that go to duplicate hold shift click on the red shape beneath it and go to path difference bring the opacity all the way up and then path break apart click off of it to deselect everything and then just take this extra red piece and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that so let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% we now have the shape and the structure of the pretzel finished. So all we have to do now is color it in and put some salt on it. So to color it in, I'm going to click on this blue shape, hold shift, click on the other blue shape. And while still holding shift, click on all of the blue shapes so we have them all selected. And I'm going to make it a shade of orange. I guess like that. That's pretty close. 
Uh, maybe I'll go to the fill and under the HSL tab, I'll just bring that down a little bit. I'll bring this up a little bit and that's pretty good. Click off of that to deselect. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click on that red object. I'm going to hold shift and click on all of the red objects to select them all. And with them all selected, I'll press F7 to get the dropper and just make them the same shade of orange. But then come over here to the L row and slide that to the left a little bit. Maybe I'll make this a little more reddish like that. And that's pretty good like that. We can go back to the select tool, click off of that to deselect everything. And now we're just going to put some specks of salt on there. So to do that, we just create little white circles. So let me zoom in on this. We'll go to the circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift and click and drag to create a circle. It's going to have a big ugly 60 point stroke, but to get rid of that, just hold shift and click on the X. Make that white. Grab the select tool, put this over here, hold control and shift and scale it down about that much. And we could right click that and go to duplicate and put this copy over here. And we could just do this a bunch of times. Instead of right clicking, you just hit control D to duplicate it. And you put that right there, like that. Control D, control D, control D. You know what, let's turn off the snap to cusp nodes. That's just gonna get in our way. Control D. I'm just gonna go and put a few of these along the outside like that, hitting control D to make copies. If you're using Inkscape version 48, you can just press the space bar and it'll create copies while you're clicking and dragging it. Uh, I don't think that's, uh, I think they left that feature out of the newer versions of Inkscape, but, uh, so you'll have to use control D, but if you're using 48, you can use the space bar like I'm doing here. And then finally, you know, maybe space them out a little more, oops, space them out. Let me zoom out to see how that looks. Uh, that's all right. Okay, we're gonna make a smaller, a couple, a few smaller dots. So we'll hit Control D to duplicate that, and then hold Control and Shift, scale that down. We'll make some smaller specks of salt as well, and just plug them in in the empty spaces, and fill in those gaps. You don't want to use too much. If you put too much on there, it doesn't look right. I did. I made that mistake when I was planning the video. I used way too much salt, and it didn't even look like a pretzel. And that should pretty much do it. And we can click and drag over the whole thing and group it together. And that's uh, that's it. We've created our pretzel using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.